We are back here to determine the best old school throwback game of 2020. Now, old school throwback, it does not have to be a game that is old. It, it doesn't have to be like Doom Eternal or, you know, something that is an older franchise. It just has to be something that makes you have those member berries, you know? Yeah. In, not, in a, not a retro game, but a retro style. Yes, a game that yeah. harkens back to a different time period would gotcha. be the best way to describe this award. There are, which are, there are quite a few of these this year. I was surprised. Just for a frame of reference, we gave this award to Ion Fury last year. Yeah, and well deserved. Yeah. Um, because that was because that definitely reminded us more of Duke. Mm-hmm. Where definitely, like, it was like a Duke spiritual successor with like amazing level design. But yeah, this year, boy, do we have a lot of options. Yeah, um, and I, I guess. Uh, before David goes off on uh, on some of the uh, some of the Doom like games, uh, I guess it's a good place to at least remember uh, Crash Bandicoot used to be a thing back in the day, and the new Crash is just it feels like it feels really very much like the old vintage PlayStation Crash Bandicoot games, but also they've made it they've advanced it just enough to make it feel modern, but it's still mainly the old school Crash. Like that formula still works, and I was really surprised at how well at how much fun that was to play. I would put like ninety five again. Mm-hmm. I would uh, I would nominate Demon Souls just because like Blue Point is that's literally what they do. They make these throwback games, but with new aesthetics to them, mm-hmm. uh, going so far as to preserve the original code. But and I'll let TJ speak to this if he's there. Um, Streets of Rage four. When I played it, it's not that it was a bad game. I just realized like I don't think beat 'em ups are really for me anymore. But like the fact that you can even unlock like retro soundtracks from Streets of Rage 2 for that game. Uh, Streets of Rage 4, like, clearly a lot of love went into that to make it, it almost reminds me of a Doom 2016. It has this modern uh, face to it, but it has a lot of great old school mechanics and they also like expanded on those to make them feel newer and fresher. Right, so like you've got the modern, all the modern art aesthetic, the new moves, like all the, all the hand-drawn character sprites in that game. But, like, from the outset, you can unlock Streets of Rage 1, 2, and, and 3 characters in that game. Like, you can have these pixelated versions of Axel running alongside Streets of Rage 4 Axel. And that's just kind of hilarious in of itself. But that game is also, like, filled to the brim with Easter eggs. Like, and one of my favorite versions of that is that if you get your hands on a taser in some of the levels, and then you find an arcade machine and zap it with the taser, it will take you to like a special, it will take you to like a retro level where you fight oh. a retro boss yeah. with your- <laughs> That's Those cool. are super fun. Great. Like, yeah, I played, I played through most of the game with TJ and uh, I wasn't ready to stop when we were done. Uh, I mean, oh. I had to go do the wide world of electronic sports, so we had to wrap it up. But, <laughs> um, I mean, how long have we been waiting for a new Streets of Rage game? And to have it done so well, so supremely well, to be exactly what you'd want. And I think I also made this point earlier in another debate, like they evolved the combat while still staying true to like that traditional beat em up feel, uh, which is, it's hard to do right. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to do right. And Streets of Rage 4 did it right. And it, yeah. it deserves a lot of credit for that. Yeah. Like, the, the characters as they are in Streets of Rage 4, like the Streets of Rage 4 characters, are really well balanced in, like, what they can do. Like, you got your, your all-around, your, 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 your agile characters, you got your heavy-handed bruiser. And, like, the way in which they operate is just so different from one another and really fun. And yeah, there's a character with a bass guitar that hits people all fully coolly style. And she's <laughs> small, so she can like jump onto the shoulders of, of enemies and just lay like just hammer on their face with their fists and yeah. then do it do like a flip kick off of it. It's hilarious. It's um, that's cool. Yeah. I uh and then like when you want to just go wacky, you like go into one of those some of those retro characters are stupidly overpowered. Like <laughs> Streets of Rage one Axel just like hits like a brick and he has like a three foot arm span <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> because, because of the way his pixel is. 
<laughs> the way his sprite is, it's just hilarious. It's like great. that's what that's the way you play the game when you're like, I just want to have fun and be ridiculous. And I think mm. it's fun that it has like those standardized options and then those off over the top options. Yeah, not since Double Dragon Neon have I enjoyed a side-scrolling brawler this much. Double Dragon Neon was great. I love Double Dragon Neon. Thank you. I'm glad you like. I uh, I do like if Streets of Rage Four is easily in my is easily in my top ten this year, but there was another game that beat it out for me in this category of retro throwbacks, mm-hmm. and uh, it speaks to my personal preferences. The game is Fate Tactics. I love this game. Uh, Fate Tactics. If you've been hammering on trash cans, demanding that Square Enix make another Final Fantasy Tactics, but you mm-hmm. haven't played Fate Tactics, you're doing yourself a disservice. Oh. Yeah, this is the game. This is the game for those people who have been it's waiting better for... Than, it's better than the Final Fantasy Tactics remaster that came out this year, that's for sure. All right, Fate Tactics is like the full-on gridded, turn-based, character-driven tactics experience. Like, pixelated sprites of plenty. It has a little bit of, per, like, persona in it for like the fact that you you defeat monsters and you collect them and they can become part of your arsenal Mm -hmm. but like the characters are so good the 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 story is fun like you got all these like you got all these scenarios that you that are like part of the main story but then you can go off on like tangents of like different stories that will help you power up your characters and get special equipment um you can pursue different like main quests at the same time uh it's it's everything i like about a game like final fantasy tactics distilled thoughtfully into a new form and like dude Osif, you watched the stream the mm-hmm. way in which you can combo up in that game like yeah. there's elements to the, there's like elements to every character in this game and if you set them up properly you can just like you can set characters up to do a string of combinations where you can knock one, where you can set characters up to where they'll react to something, and you'll knock an enemy into that reactive zone, and it'll set off a chain combination of just all your characters acting. Yep. It's no, I, it, so it's, cool. It's honestly my favorite indie delicious stream you did all year, um, and it sold me on the game super hard. Like I was like, oh man, I need to get this. <laughs> uh, but it's the game is really charming too. Like it's. Uh, the character design's really cool. Um, yes, I, I think this definitely applies to this category. It's it's a genre that people may not think about as old school, but we don't really have many good tactics it's, games. It's definitely old school. Like we yeah. don't, and like I, when I think of Game Boy Advance, I think it was Game Boy Advance, right? Uh, or is that I think uh, of it was a DS? It was PlayStation, D- and then Game Boy Advance. It was Game yeah, Boy yeah, Advance, yeah. right? Yeah, like, mm-hmm. I think of Final Fantasy Tactics. So like. The fact that they haven't brought that to Switch is a crime. Uh, but yeah, Fate Tactics it scratches that itch big time. That and um, Advanced Wars, for me, go like hand-in-hand hand with GBA. But yeah, I, I, I want to talk about a game that came out this year kind of unexpectedly. It was supposed to be released in beta, uh, but they decided to release it. Diabotical, uh, which is essentially Quake 3 Arena. Um, this game nails the feeling of Quake 3 Arena. And it does it in like new kind of art style, fun way. It's like, I think it's made in Unreal Engine, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> but outside of that, it's uh, it's really a good faith recreation of Diabotic, of, uh, of Quake 3, um, which, you know, Quake Champions tried to do that and failed. So to see a community made, effort like this and the grassroots esport that it's becoming i i really diabotical holds a special place in my heart this year for sure it's definitely an old school throwback and like we mentioned earlier like such an important new game for the community that has seen so little Mm -hmm. in that market for so long and it's cool to see quake like you know, people from the Quake scene embrace it. You know, Fatality had an event. Um, I've seen 
our you know our own great Quake Holio champion Disco Ryan it, it plays quite a bit of Diabolical and competes competitively in it. So it's just it's been cool to see that crossover. Uh, it's not it's not that like none of us want to play Quake anymore, but this might be the best way to play Quake in 2020. Yeah, so. uh, I, I'll I'll speak to Demon Souls, even though I don't think it'll win this category. There are others I get behind more, but. Um, Demon Souls, like I was actually really interested for TJ. I was glad when TJ stepped up to review this game because I know he had some Soulsborne experience and um, a lot of people missed the original Demon Souls because it was exclusive to PS3 during a time when 360 was just running away with that console generation. Demon Souls was one of the reasons that um, PlayStation 3 started to, to gain a little ground. And um, I, think it, I think it has a place here because of how Bluepoint approaches remakes uh their their ideology isn't the one that i would adopt to, to a remake I, I lean more toward what capcom and square enix do um but i am really excited and also happy to see souls fans who missed out on this game or who who maybe wanted to play it but as of two and a half years ago couldn't really enjoy the full experience because the servers were taken down uh, now they get to experience it. And also, I think it's kind of a cool Cinderella story. Again, like, uh, Demon Souls was reviled by Sony. Uh, they did, wanted nothing to do with it. And it went on to become this uh, cult classic. It, it won Game of the Year from GameSpot in 2009. And that was a really, really big fucking deal. Um, and then Dark Souls just kind of exploded. It would, it would be like if people missed Wolfenstein 3D, but then suddenly Doom took off. You know, it was like, hey, I, Doom is a, a lot better than Wolfenstein 3D, but you would also enjoy this if you want to see where this other great game came from. So, Man, talk about one of the most entertaining things we've ever done in eSports. Side-by-side -side Wolfenstein 3D speedruns. Exactly. Attacks. Exactly. That those are but the score attacks were my favorite segments of, of those uh, quick holio tournaments. Yeah, in general. like and Wolfenstein three D is at the center of that in Spear of Destiny. It is. Well, Dude, and it's it's I arguably love... more fun than like Doom twenty sixteen just because Wolfenstein three D has a score built in and it had mm -hmm. treasure that you had to factor in. Like you can't just kill all the things. You need to like if you know the secrets of where to find like crowns versus treasure chests, you're gonna get these huge boosts. But yeah. Yeah, it's, that's my argument for Demon Souls, even though I don't think it wins this category. Okay. So there's another game that came out this year. I haven't, so far during these deliberations, I haven't been pounding the table too hard about <laughs> it. Uh, but I, I wrote a love letter to it in my review. Uh, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2. Uh, it came out this year. I love Amber Berries. It's hard for me to think of that as an old school throwback. But it is uh, just because it makes me feel old. Yeah, I don't know, but yeah, I agree. I agree. It is, and it's oh my god, it's done so well. It's because they took the best parts of the whole series mm -hmm. and and threw it in there too. You know, the reverence um, that they held the series in when they made this game is just it's you you see it everywhere as you play the yeah. game, and they took the best gameplay mechanics of three, put them into the levels of two and one added their own flair, some things that I don't necessarily like, but they put their stamp on it while at the same time making it feel like the originals uh, outside of a couple of things. But it is, this franchise needed this so much. It's like Doom 2016, the Doom franchise desperately needed it. Yeah, yeah. This franchise desperately needed Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2. Uh, cause we could not as fans, if this sucked, I, I don't know what I would have done. <laughs> that might've been, might been the last nail in the coffin for the franchise. This would be would have never been another I, if, they, if they can't even get the I old mean, school right, then what are they even doing? Yeah. If you I can't honestly, get these two masterpieces right, like good luck. I honestly thought the last Tony Hawk was the nail in the coffin. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like this, this breathed new life into the series in a year where people were kind of hungry for skate games. Yeah, know? like all these yeah, indies were finally coming point. out of that's the woodwork, point. like Skater XL and uh, Skatebird and Skate Story yeah. and even Skate got announced. Like there's a new skate game that's coming, you know? Like, So for this to be like a surprise Jeff Keighley, whatever morning, summer of doing his job announcement, like it, it was a great, it was a great surprise 
and I I'm such a fan of the series. If this game sucked, I would have torn a new one in the review. But it was quite the opposite. I ended up having to play it almost 100% it on PS4. And then I went out and I got it on PC for Epic Game Store because I just wanted to play it on an ultra wide. It runs amazing on PC. And yeah, like it, this game has so much replay value. Like you can go and 100% every skater, you can go out there and just free skate. You can play the multiplayer, which isn't great, but at least there is online multiplayer, something that's brand new to the series. Uh, but yeah, I think this is, talk about a very weird year for this category uh, with the, the lists of games that we're, we're listing off here. But yes, this game was definitely an old school throwback of 2020. Yeah, as yeah. someone as someone who's never been into skating or like followed skating or have never been at all into skating, I played a lot of that sophomore year and playing this game again brought it right back to me sitting on my CRTV in my room just playing the game. And I think that's incredible to like get that feeling back again it in a game. Me back to my Dreamcast days. I mean that that's so rarely really, that's the tradition of old school throwback, you know, like And it ended up having public enemy and anthrax. It did. Yeah. It did end up getting recreating that amazing soundtrack because that is wow the, yeah. there are the, so many you... publishers and developers that have gotten the old school right that i almost feel bad for inti creates because they're they're so overlooked when it comes to like get getting the old school but i'll talk to that in a second i didn't mean to interrupt you there also go ahead no that's fine i, I just think like this game wouldn't have been the same without the soundtrack and the effort you were that, worried like, about public enemy not being in it for a second there yeah, because they even came out and said that it wouldn't be there. Uh, and I think it was probably a licensing issue or whatever, and they, they hammered it out because Activision has billions of dollars and they can afford to get licensing rights. Uh, hmm. But yeah, this game, like, I think back to, like, skating on Ve in Venice, right? And, like, Superman was playing when I landed that huge combo. Or, like, you know, uh, Police Truck was playing in the warehouse when I landed that combo. Like, I have memories of playing this game that are attached to different songs. And I think that the fact that they brought all of it together in this package is really... It just, We'd love to show people, but we don't want the DMCA strike. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, it definitely enhances the game experience that they were able to recreate that soundtrack. But yeah, go ahead, Ozzy. I do feel a little bad for Integrate just because they do such a tremendous job of like pre recreating that old school experience. We cracked a joke earlier about Dead by Daylight doing better Silent Hill than Konami at this point. The Bloodstained franchise does Castlevania better than Konami at this point. And uh, Curse of the Moon 2 came out like under everybody's radar and it's built, it built on that 8-bit first game. Like it's so much bigger. The modern the way they make manage to make like the bosses so much bigger is just amazing. And also it's hard as hell. It's it's an NES throwback in that sense. And that it's just as hard as that the old Castlevania games. I, it's probably not gonna win this category, but I wanted to give it recognition for that. So it's not just Castlevania. It's, mm -hmm. it's not just Castlevania hard, it's Castlevania three hard. Yes. Uh. So good on Into Creates. I mean, better luck <laughs> another year, guys, but like keep doing what you're doing for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I love the. I got really into Bloodstained earlier this year, so. Uh, I love this game. I see CNC Remastered is also on our list. Who put that there? That might have been me, also, because I just remember how much Krabs loved the uh, the remaster collection when he reviewed it. Krabs is just a softie. I got some for you, <laughs> softies. I'm going to open my argument by saying I feel like some of these nominations are not really in the spirit of best throwback and that they're literally the same exact game from the time where we're aching to get nostalgia from in the case of Demon Souls, Tony Hawk, stuff like okay. that. I mean, it's not really an homage or a love letter to the stuff. It's literally the exact same thing. I disagree with Tony Hawk and Streets of Rage 4, man. I disagree. These are not one for I didn't one say Streets of Rage 4, but I mean... Tony Hawk's not a one for one. Tony game. Hawk is a little yeah. bit like Street Fighter 2 Turbo, where it's the same stuff, but it's got stuff added in and mechanics from the others mixed in yeah. with Bastard or whatever. But that aside, it's not what I'm going to argue for. Uh, I'm nostalgic for a time when personal computers were stupider harder to use things didn't make sense but there were small bits of fun you could have here and there and some of the things i remember enjoying the most 
or this virtual stripper lady on my desktop or my friend Bonzi buddy, these good friends you could have with you that would spend time with you where you had to write a book report or surf the net or whatever you had to do. And there is a game that came out on Steam this year that has been under everybody's radar that really brings back the great feelings I had for my desktop, uh, almost like virtual pets, not exactly like a Tamagotchi, but maybe even better. And that's why I'm nominating uh, just the most special of stuff. I'm talking about desktop Ricardo. I'm gonna post uh, the YouTube trailer and the thing so you can see. <laughs> desktop Ricardo? Desktop DJ. Ricardo lives on your computer and you play with him and he, he, does, he brings a lot just to day to day. Like it helps me get through working every day here. It's Shaq News. <laughs> He's posable. You can resize him. You can dress him up. You can make him do whatever you want to do. It reminds me a lot of Paul Rudd's Celery Man and how happy it makes me. Uh, just everything about this for a dollar on Steam. And it's it hurts this me is... thinking about how much I love Desktop Ricardo. Oh, he's like Clippy. Okay, I see him. Yeah, he's like Clippy, <laughs> but a dude in a G-string dance. A slightly sexier Clippy. Slightly, slightly is an understatement yeah. that you should take back. I don't know. Clippy might have been hotter. <laughs> He's currently rated at 97% overwhelmingly positive from all the reviewers that have come in. So maybe yeah. you should step off. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> this top Ricardo doesn't really seem like a game. That's because you're not willing to open your mind to play. Fair. <laughs> okay. I mean, if I'm going to be like the closed minded old people in like footloose or something I'm... it's a game everyone's entitled yeah. to their own opinions that's i just yeah it's like a, I game. It's a game it's a game you nominated but it's, i don't it's think it's... that this precludes any of the other nominations i don't think that's it's like it's not like some definitive nomination for old school throwback like i've never thought you know what i need in my life to really bring back the nostalgia feels is this stripper dude on my desktop i'm not saying that sometimes the things we truly need are not what we've been wanting all the time but stuff that's just been hiding around the corner the whole time but what i really Desktop wanted Ricardo has been under our noses all year and we just ignored him yeah i think a lot of people are ignoring the greatness of tony hawk's pro skater one plus two as well like that was that that game at a time where like i was in intense pain and i was on medical leave like it was my comfort food it was my daily thing um, maybe yeah. this is your comfort food, but we really skateboarding fans really needed a new game uh, and yeah. a game that harkened back to the and, greatness of skateboarding and games. Sk Skater XL kind of fell fl flat on its face while it was trying to do a kickflip, um, and Tony Hawk but don't, don't. had to come in and show him how it was done. But yeah, and I also think uh, Diabolical fills in fills a similar hole. Like that, the, there are no arena shooters out there of any consequence right now <laughs> other than overwatch Le overwatch right like i guess overwatch is an arena shooter leading edge it's not a shooter Valorant. Like <laughs> all the best <laughs> shooters aren't eligible for this because they're in early access like overkill or proteus like yeah. Yeah. yeah like I, yes and there's proteus otherwise there's otherwise i would have dominated that but it's yeah it. and i i know proteus was kind of mentioned but yeah like these are games that didn't really come out yet yeah. um and i don't think hellbound is that impressive like hellbound definitely is an old school throwback but it's not it's, it's an underwhelming it's not it's not enough yeah, not it's, like, it's it's not, it's not really there. representative of what made those games great. Like it is fun, but like Ion Fury kind of became the benchmark for that in terms of shooters for me. Like it had a really uh old school feel. Not even that it used build, but like it it really did a good job of like reminding you like of a day when first person shooters had all these just wild weapons instead of the standard military arsenal that is kind of just um mm -hmm. suffused shooters of today and yeah but yeah i i would i don't know we should probably vote on this soon uh but these are these are all really good suggestions they're all over the place you know like we have a platformer we have a metroidvania we have a skateboarding game we have a brawler we have some sort of desktop clippy thing <laughs> we have command and conquer remastered and we have fate tactics like a tactics game and then we we have an arena shooter it's a very very weird a very good year it's a good year for old school through throwbacks it's a very tough year <laughs> to vote 
Um, can, I, can I just say that I wish that we could get permission for a quote on uh, an advertisement for Desktop Ricardo. Asif, Asif Khan, CEO and Editor-in-Chief of Chack News says, this is a weird, clippy thing. Like, that seems like pretty good praise for Desktop Ricardo. Does I he mean, help you with stuff? Like, I'm sure he can help you. Clippy, hey, do Ricardo's do service like, dogs help people with anxiety and problems? I mean... Yes, they do. <laughs> So then, yes. Then that's your Desktop answer. Ricardo does. I, I think he, Chris made it pretty like... clear that Desktop Retar Ricardo had helped him. Hey, hey, hey I heard what it. you just almost said. Hey, I didn't <laughs> say anything. I wasn't going to say <laughs> I didn't say anything. Um, I don't know I'm what you guys are talking about. I just wonder if this des if Desktop Ricardo is never, is Ricardo ever like, I see you're uh, trying to write a resume. Would you like me to dance sexy for you while you write the exactly resume? Exactly what he does. You never used Bonzi Buddy back in the day? No. Yeah. I remember Bonzi Buddy. You missed out on an important part of life. Oh, I, that... I understand exactly why this is a callback to the old school retro days of PC gaming and even like <laughs> Windows 3.11 or 95 era, but I don't know if it's my not gonna win my vote mostly. This is more after dark screensaver. Listen to you try to talk <laughs> about this thing, Asif has been pretty hilarious, I have to say. Thanks. If people get to get all hot and bothered <laughs> about Hypnospace Outlaw, I get to have desktop Ricardo. <laughs> okay, let's vote. Can we vote? Yeah, you could vote. Oh, uh, I don't want to go first because I kind of want to see, I want to take the temperature of the room, but I guess I'll just stick myself out there. Um, I think Streets of Rage 4 kind of embodies this uh, this category for me. It's it's not my type of game anymore, but I can't look at it objectively and say, oh, they did a bad job with this. Like, it's yeah, clearly a letter to this style of, of game. They did a very good job. Yeah. I and like to Chris's it, it, point, it's a brand new game. It's not just a remake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah same thing with Fate Tactics for me. It's like, if... if if Fate Tactics hadn't come out this year, my vote would go to Streets of Rage 4. But like for my personal tastes, I love strategy games and I yeah, love I RPG too. games and I love pixelated games and I love how all of them come together in a new package in Fate I, Tactics. My vote was between those two. I'm considering changing my mind, but for now I'll stay the course. Fate Tactics is so charming on every level and engaging on every level that I love about Final Fantasy Tactics. It's I, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. If you aren't, if you claim to love Final Fantasy Tactics, but you don't, but you know about Fate Tactics and haven't played it, you're doing something wrong. Bill, are you now back? I, now I know. I'm back. So is that, is, is your vote still the same? It is, but I just want to say the reason for my vote. Uh, I, I didn't play very much of it with you, but there's no vote that I enjoy giving as much as when I'm playing uh, and playing an hour or two or whatever it was of Tony Hawk with you and just like every minute of that time you were talking to me about Tony Hawk and its importance and the levels and the details and I was like that was it for me that was the end I was I, uh, I could talk about Rodney Mullen for like five hours you know it was just this. that passion I was I just kind of like you were saying like you said uh, it was important a game for uh, people who are into skateboarding or skateboarding games and that was like kind of reminded me of like the way that you were passionately talking about the game and then of course in slack and other calls and whatnot throughout the time since it's been released so tony hawk for me and i played it and i liked it donovan also voted for tony hawk and sam also voted for tony hawk so, tony hawk for me greg voting for tony hawk wow i'm going to give my i'm gonna have in anti creates back i'm gonna say bloodstained curse of the moon too Okay. Like I said, there's no real bad nomination here. No, there's not. Yeah, these yeah. are all really good games. And, I'd argue and, one of them was pretty bad. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> and like the wind, he was gone. I think maybe he's like entranced by desktop Ricardo. Right he's probably now, just right? staring at him and jiggle his bits. <laughs> Ricardo's like, did you, did you cast a vote for me? You can Chris, change his underwear. Come on, Chris. Because you're voting for Ricardo, right? Change yeah, his absolutely. underwear, Chris. Josh? What are you talking about, Blake? That's disgusting. Change his <laughs> underwear. Do it. Blake, you are out of order. Josh? Um, 
Uh, I think I have to. I have to side with Ozzy. Bloodstain, like it just brings back a lot of a lot of good memories mm -hmm. of the Metroidvania days, and I think it captures it really well. And it's a, it's a great throwback to that. I love Tony Hawk, but I see it more as just a, a retelling of those games than than exactly a, a throwback for me personally. But mm -hmm. yeah, my vote goes to Bloodstain. Okay, Steve. I'm going with Bloodstain as well. Here's a question, as we as I'm gathering these votes. How many of you haven't played Diabotical yet? I have not yet. I have not. I know, we are disappointments. I'm just gonna shake my head. The thing is, I have played Diabotical, but the Metroidvania genre means more to me than... Man, you should go work for a Metroidvania yeah. site. Oh, okay. We love um, our Metroidvania as a Shaq News. How dare you? <laughs> uh, it's not like we were founded on Quake or anything or whatever. Um, <laughs> I'm voting for Diabotical because I, I've been a member of this community since Quake was actually a thing. Uh, uh, other people are voting for Tony Hawk. I made a pretty impassioned case for it. I still think Diabotical is a better old school throwback. Uh, but yeah, Blake. Oh man, I feel like I've got to pick which parent I want to live with right now. Uh, I well, love Tony. I love Tony Hawk. Uh, I always will. It has such a special place in my heart. But I feel like I've been waiting a much longer time to finally get a good Streets of Rage game, or get a real Streets of Rage game at all. Really, I mean, we really haven't had one since the Genesis era. So I'm gonna go with Streets of Rage Four just because huh. it delivered, and Sweet. I had to be so patient. Okay, well, let me let me tally up these votes. Looks like Streets of Rage 4 got two votes. Um, Diabotical got one vote. Desktop Ricardo got one vote. And Tony Hawk, or sorry, Bloodstain got one, two, three votes. And Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 plus 2 got one, two, three, four votes. So Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 Plus 2 is going to be our old school throwback of 2020, apparently. 